We are live. Episode number nine of Lou Pickney Plays Fire Pro Wrestling World. Last one of these I did was like two nights ago. Went off on a long rant about WWE creative and NXT call-ups and various incarnations of uh, problems that have popped up and the reasons why, my thoughts and all that. So if you're interested, it's within the archive. I'm trying to cut it within like Twitch itself so it's only, you know, highlight, but it's been processing it for things like two days now. And I'm just going to leave it alone until it either does this thing or it doesn't, but on the YouTube video of it, I've got the exact time code you can click to. One thing that is interesting that's come up in conversation has been the talk of how wrestling shows are going to get crowd noise in and unique ways to do that. Early on, I was thinking, like, can you get people there you know, watching live to be able to communicate? That's something similar with the NFL draft. And that's a more contrived, but it's something that's along the same lines of trying to keep the fan involvement there to at least some level. Easier said than done, for sure. But my thought was, the thing that DDT is doing, I think by using Zoom, to have maybe like 100 fans connected to that. And I thought that might be a good idea, but I thought, well, what happens, though, to people that are watching on a delay? You know, inevitably, some things are going to come quicker than others as far as you know, how fast your connection is, the latency, or other things that cause just enough of a delay where it might be like a, a huge high spot and you like a five-second delay for the crowd reaction if not longer. And I appreciate some creative ideas. And in the worst of times, sometimes the situation calls for people to have to get creative. And sometimes that creativity ends up turning into at least one positive to come out of a very negative situation. All right, so match number one. You're playing as Nature Boy Ric Flair. Taking on Tajiri, Papa Shango, Devon Dudley, Mysterioso, Raven, Dominic Dijakovic, the former Donovan Dijak, and Floyd Mayweather Jr. So the boxer in there, of course, the flash knockout will be in play as long as he's there. I mean, you can have a flash knockout at any point, but with boxers, that uh, tends to up the ante quite the bit much greater risk and then sometimes you have some I've, some of the most entertaining stuff to this point has been like a boxer in there with like a hardcore really tough wrestler what was it uh thomas hitman hearns and cactus jack i think that was the matchup hearns had a really memorable one and there was another if it wasn't hearns it was one of them and again i would have very little uh, ability as far as trying to design some of these boxers even though the layout for some of them but most of you at least know the name, and if you don't, it's probably an old-time boxer that has an interesting story behind it. All right, so here we go. This is me playing against Ric Flair, against Tajiri, Papa Shango, Devon Dudley, Mysterioso, Raven, Dominic Dijakovic, the former Donovan Dijak, and Floyd Money Mayweather Jr. Referee is Paul Turner. The venue, USA Grand Dome. And the ring theme, Two Boots Pizza. And here we go. Two Boots, Two Boots Pizza is a uh, restaurant that I first set up in New York City. I went there for the 2012 NFL Draft. Flair, hang on the outside here. I type in chat. I'm playing as Rick Flair. So we ended up opening a Two Boots location in Nashville. Not too long after I moved back here in 2015. Well, I've been there a couple of times. It's kind of tricky from where I'm at on the southeast side to get into the city just to go for pizza. It's a little tricky. Because unlike how it was when I was a kid growing up here in Nashville, the traffic is brutal. It's progressively worse just because there's been a lot of people move here. It's been a wonderful place to live. 
traffic is an issue. Which makes working from home, like I do quite a bit, really like all now, without any uh, sports broadcast to do, at least in the short term. So, uh, it's a lot more tolerable to put up with the annoyances of being a true independent contractor. I don't know, anything like a half hour commute into the like, 90 minute commute, it's like it's in a wreck. So much time people spend on the road that it's wasted. But they have to, they gotta get to work, get it. Inverted Atomic Drop on Devon Dudley by Ric Flair. To Jerry Sims, Dominic Dijakovic. In the corner. I have to kind of say it weird because otherwise it'll... I want to say Dominic Dijak because that's his name he used for the longest time. Yeah. Which is you remember him say. Papa Shango fires Devon Dudley and Ric Flair. Side headlock on Tajiri by Raven. Take the Rattler away. Raven with a sleeper hold on Floyd Mayweather Jr. Papa Shango working over Dijakovic. Down Devon there with Ric Flair. It's like trying to navigate traffic sometimes in Irish whip early in a match like this. We got eight wrestlers in there at once. Devon Dudley knocked out to the near side. There's the Pop uh, of Magic. What for Shango now? It's gonna get annoying. When I was testing out the rings and the venues earlier, I just put random select and up with Papa Shango and Tajiri. I always love having a Tajiri in a match. He's got the mist. He's got his uh, ECW connection. Good memories of that. He's fun to have in a match. The buzzsaw kick. Spike Powerball. I saw Mysterioso in person. And of all things, the New Japan of America uh, show in Nashville. About more than three months ago. But his match isn't on the New Japan World YouTube page like the rest of them are because they've kept the matches with uh, Rinda Rita off of them. But that's because with Narita as a young lion, the whole thing your excursions have disappeared for a while. And he keeps showing up on you know, New Japan's streaming service. It's one thing when he was early on as Jimmy Lyons, particularly as the belts that whatever his excursion gimmick will be whenever things get back to normal. Two count by Tajiri on Papa Shango. Throws Devon to the outside. Pin to Mysterioso by Raven. A missed. Look at Mattis in there. Somebody's busted open. He's busted open. There's Dijakovic. The barbed wire baseball bat. Side rushing lights by Raven. More missed. This is not necessarily uh, Ric Flair's match here. Got yourself on all sides. You got gimmick free galore. You got the uh, uppercut from Mayweather. Look at that. Agility. 2.9 on your fall by Dijakovic. Coming off the top rope. Tajiri's blown through his miss. Make sure you see some there for the finish, buddy. Point nine on your fall for Dijakovic. Oof. Landing. Fans aren't happy. Mysterioso getting unloaded on by Mayweather. Dijakovic with Raven. 
Mayweather straight up punching Devon Dudley in the face. Rick Flair is kind of hanging around with a barbed wire baseball bat. More miss. What's going on with that? This is more, buddy. Mysterioso is out. So he's already busted open. More missed. Raven and Ric Flair and a double stretch applied by Flair. Dragon suplex on Money Mayweather by Tajiri. The Magic and Fire Pro Wrestling World. You never know what you're going to see. Atomic drop on Shango by Raven. The Okai Yaburi, the stolen signature maneuver. Moonsault by Tajiri off the top rope. And Devon Dudley. Devon kicks out at two. Back drop by Papa Shango and Ric Flair. Dijak Kovic with the barbed wire baseball bat. That guy's strong enough as is. He needs the extra weaponry. Flair with a figure four on Money Mayweather. And a submission! I was not expecting that. He's not playing a heel role. Sit there and uh, torture Mayweather in the middle of that figure four. Finally. Two point now near fall on Raven. Only the pinfall by Devon Dudley. Strike exchange. Tajiri and Dijakovic. Tajiri with a thrust kick gets the better of it. The barbed wire baseball bat taking down Raven. The strength on this play by Papa Shango. Dijakovic. Stay away from Tajiri. Shango beats back a double team. We have claws and the kick out there. The exchange between Dijakovic and Raven. Shoulder break on Tajiri. And Papa Shango player with a figure four leg lock on Tajiri. Yoshihiro Tajiri. And the slide towards those ropes. And we're going to stand around there and watch Papa Shango do a power move on Dijakovic, but instead it was broken up. And now Raven with a barbed wire baseball bat. Take it down, Shango. Tajiri chasing Devon Dudley out of the ring and back in. Michinoki driver by Tajiri. Devon Dudley. Flair with an abdominal stretch applied on Papa Shango. Raven with a low blow on Papa Shango. Raven with the barbed baseball bat. Just critical by Djokovic. Referee to go over there and officially acknowledge it. Paul Turner, our referee. Have you already ring the bell for him? Paul Turner's pretty much uh, on top of things. Pretty good referee for everything I've seen. So I've got a screen cap from the uh, AW Nashville show. I wore my University of Evansville purple sweatshirt. Because the day before, Evansville beat the University of Kentucky in basketball, which is a huge deal. Number one Kentucky, losing at home to Evansville. I've been waiting more than 20 years for those teams to finally have a uh, basketball game. And they had never had one before. But uh, they would have had a matchup in the NCAA tournament. Raven won all the basketball scores for trying for a pinfall there in Flair. But if Evansville could have beaten Kansas in the first round of that 99 tournament, it's going to be in New Orleans, Evansville against Kentucky. And really good. And figure four will get a submission. Flair pushes another submission in this match. Papa Shango submits, but it's the barbed wire baseball bat and a low blow combo. One, two, three. And a three count. Devon Dudley's been eliminated by Tajiri. Mm -hmm. so we're down to three. Tajiri, Raven, and Nature Boy Ric Flair. Raven going for that barbed wire baseball bat. Find a weapon my own. I'll take a chair. That'll work. I'll just pick up this. So Jerry takes down Flair. Sorry, to Jerry. That's a tough spot to be in. Chair on one side, barbed wire baseball bat on the other. Raven and Ric Flair. Going on Portajiri. Ah, 
mistimed it there. You can't use a weapon interrupt on a multiple strike move there. Like what Tajiri was doing. Pele kick by Tajiri on Flair. Raven barbed wire baseball bat. Takes down Tajiri. Swing and a hit to the back of Tajiri. Raven vertical suplex on Tajiri. Flair has the barbed wire baseball bat. It's Raven getting a hit from it. Now Tajiri. Now getting booing and displeasure. Fans not really happy with Raven either. Eye gouge by Raven. On Tajiri. And a low blow. Blows up to Jiren, or even off the ropes. Takes down Flair. We're gonna go to the outside. Heat. Vertical suplex by Tajiri, but Raven pops right back up. And it's the even flow DDT, the Okut Yaburi stolen signature maneuver. Tajiri hitting Raven with his own move. Highly disrespectful. Look what Flair found in there. A second barbed wire baseball bat. Tajiri, the moonsault on Raven. Raven has been eliminated. We're down to two. Rick Flair and Yoshihiro Tajiri. Flair striking that barbed wire baseball bat. No disqualifications. No count outs. No pin, no rope breaks for pin pimps. Both ways you can lose. Pinfall, submission, a knockout. And it's Flair with a figure four leg lock. Will this do it? It will. That's an uncomfortable place to be sitting stuck in a figure four, I would think. It's a heat. Why is Flair clocking on his red rooster? There we go. It's a fun way to start. So it's Mysterioso, Floyd Mayweather Jr., Dominic Dijakovic. Papa Shango, Devon Dudley, Raven, and Yoshihiro Tajiri. But in the end, your winner, by way of the figure four leg lock, Nature Boy Ric Flair. Right. Aside, aside from having venues figured out for the night, I've got to make sure matchup with the arena and it doesn't clash or whatever. It's wide open as far as wrestlers go. So if you have any ideas or suggestions or any of that, just let me know and I'll see if I can accommodate you. Let's see. Go with Full Cell University Arena. We'll go with a really special radio station. In an era where radio is so homogenized and it's owned by, by and large, by a few massive companies, many of which are riddled in debt because they quit the huge debt to buy out these other companies. But Lightning 100 is the example of what radio can be when done to a high level with great involvement within the community. They have some amazing people there as far as figuring out the best music to pick out and play. I think if I would have come along a generation earlier, I would have been a music director somewhere. Unfortunately, I have very little aptitude with music. Trying to sing, you don't want to hear me sing. That's a, a punishment none of us deserve, let's be honest. I tried the piano, guitar, just never was able to make it work for me. But, uh, but give me a hundred songs to listen to, and I will find the one or two, or maybe three, that are going to be the best shot at uh, resonating with the audience. When I was in college, worked at WUEV Radio, Makes me sad. Evansville sold WUEV at the end of last year. Killed off a piece of my legacy. But the problem was I, my buddy Tom was the last uh, person uh, in charge there at WUEV. And he was telling me by the end, they were having trouble getting the, all the air shifts filled because the students didn't care anymore about it. Because now if you want to talk, you just get on here and you're on... If you're not on Twitch or on YouTube or whatever, if you want to go there, or a thousand other ways you can get your voice out. SoundCloud. Blog Talk Radio. I'm not sure if that's still a thing, but you know, it's not the old days. 
But it makes me sad because I, mean, I sound like an old timer talking about stuff from the past. But sometimes things just pop up in my memory and anyway. Not to get sad about it or whatever, that's just things change. Well, if they tried to sell that station about 12 years prior, which would have really made me mad. They were very sneaky about it. I had some heat with them, too. And there were some people there that they don't longer work there, but they were not happy with me. And some other people are even more, uh, let's say, forceful about it. They tried to put, like, a, the notice they gave was, like, a one little sentence thing and a throwaway. They hope you weren't going to notice. Hope I wasn't going to notice. But the thing was, I noticed So I'm sad to see it go. I'm sad it's the place where I broke into the business. I really have got an audio tape. I need to get this recorded to my computer. It's a broadcast. And I'm, I believe that was the broadcast. I wouldn't have the tape. I think it was just somebody else. Uh, from the 1997 University of Evansville Aces football team. That was the final season for Evansville football. We didn't know it at the time. They waited until after the season. We thought it was weird that Evansville didn't fire their head coach because he had a terrible year. And he... It was... It felt like it was be time for him to be, you know, uh, shown the door and somebody new brought it. And it didn't happen. And ultimately, find, come to find out that, oh, wait, yeah, the reason we didn't repl- fire him because we didn't want to have it obvious we weren't going to replace him. So that was unfortunate. At the same time, I understood, though, Evansville's got like 2,600 students, almost all undergrad. But I got great education there. I was very fortunate. You would think one test take it on one day, one time, would make the difference it does. That ACT, I took it and got a 28. Then I would take a prep course to really help me, you know, learn the test better. How to, you know, took it and got 30. Two point difference in that test meant the difference of tens of thousands of dollars for me. From one morning on a Saturday. Kind of blew my mind then. Even now thinking back on it now, the mind of a early 40s adult is just... I was fortunate. Anyway, not to opine about radio, I was going to say that Lightning 100, it's this amazing station here in Nashville. It's about as, it is a legitimate thing too. It's not like a, we're going to pretend to care corporate thing. This is authentic. Well, Nashville is known primarily for its country music. And this, they, and funny things, I grew up here about country music's not my thing. You know, some I'll listen to or whatever, but it's just, but each his own. But the music they play on Lightning 100 is just, it's phenomenal. They do an outstanding job there. So, with that in mind, that's the theme for the ring. We're going to have here with the Full Cell Arena. They go with Teddy Long. We'll see how this works. I think I have a better version of this. There's Batista, the Super Jack Batista. I think it's one of those. Uh, yeah, there's that one. Blue Tista. Let's see. Damian Sandow. I had such high hopes for Sandow for when he was in WWE and was just completely underutilized and wasted, basically. And they had all that build-up with him and The Miz, and the blow-off was just a throwaway match on Raw with no build whatsoever for that night. So what I saw from him from the yeah, NWA Power Show was amusing, but I just thought it was going to be a lot different for him, a lot better, but... He went to Impact, and I don't think it uh, particularly went all that well. Just my opinion. Hey, look, it's tough in pro wrestling, especially going from a company like WWE, when he had been enduring for months and months, if not longer. You know, the, uh, whole, we're not, you're getting over too much. We're going to you know, take your legs off from under you kind of thing. Anyway. Which is 
Cedric Alexander the other day. I noted at that point I'd use Cedric Alexander a lot in my fire promoter mode when I was playing that on here. He was like a major player for me with the AEW game I had. I think he would be if they could get out of this WWE deal and get there, but whenever, if and when. With the red gear, red and black gear from Cedric. Have these, like two very different faces for the same guy. I mean, <laughs> what's up with that? Like when I go through and check out the various venues and what ring would be the next one, or ring design would be the next one to go with, I make a note of what the pull the mat is. And I can always change it, but it's Make for some tedious viewing. A couple of the very best of fixing rings aren't quite right on a live stream. Not the most compelling content, I wouldn't think. We'll throw in the biz. Punched around here, seeing some ideas. Sometimes kind of jump out at you. A lot of these wrestlers I've used already. I've used them relatively recently. Look for T. Hmm. It's weird with Arn Anderson. I don't know that I've ever really seen a perfect version of Anderson in a video game. Part of this because kind of he fell through the cracks between the Brain Busters run of the WWF and then back to the Charlotte territory, the back to Crockett, which by that point was, of course, the company was owned by Turner. Even when they had him in the one of the WWE 2K games, it still wasn't quite right. Two versions of here to choose from. So it's kind of weird though. That's, that's more like on the. Let's say he's trying to coordinate with Booker T. The nice thing with Fire Pro, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's, it's just being creative, so you have a remarkable amount of latitude, which is part of the fun, at least for me it is. Do whatever you want. And within reason. I'm going to go ahead and throw another match with a boxer. I have to admit, I don't know much about Gene Tunney. I'm sure I looked up his info before I chose to download him. But no, I've got to use it. So this will be interesting. At least in theory it will be. All right, so here we go. Me playing as Dave Batista. 
taking on Damian Sandow, Cedric Alexander, The Great Kali, The Miz, Booker T, Arn Anderson, and Gene Tunney. Your referee is Teddy Long, the venue Full Sail University Arena, and the ring theme Lightning 100. Here we go. But Lightning 100 has an online stream for anyone that might be interested in listening. Worth checking out at least, and nothing else. Arn Anderson immediately body slams Batista out of the ring. High gallery fight. Luther T on the Miz. Trying to stay away from the boxer and stay away from the big man, Kali. He's early. Be playing as Batista there in the blue. People out of the ring like crazy tonight. Body's well, on Booker T. He's got Cedric Alexander. Booker T in the ring just got taken down there by Kali. It's a bit of wood there. Yeah, Bob. Like a wood used by Arn Anderson going after Cedric. Side slam by Batista. Booker T. Sandow. Body slam on Batista. How about Gene Tunney in there? Giant Kali. Yeah, we're standing out, out of the ring there over to hang out with Arn Anderson yeah, and Cedric Alexander. Cedric gets into the ring. <laughs> Booker C, side slam. Kali, the Miz. Punch in the back of the head by Tony. Strike exchange by Cedric Alexander and Arn Anderson. Punches in the face of Batista. Sandell coming back to the outside again. Yeah, Bob. Double ace and Cedric Alexander into that left corner. <laughs> Batista went for a close lane, but didn't time it right. Slipped on right by him. Those punches yeah, being thrown yeah, by Bob. the Miz on Sandell. You don't even think about Miz down and Sandell when I put this together. Yeah, Bob. Arn Anderson with suplex and Cedric Alexander to the outside. Cedric back in the ring. He's trying to weapon the bat. Back away over here. Over here with Booker T. Leg drop outside the ring. Got Batista on Booker T to Booker. So Batista, Salutista into the blue railing. Kali takes down Sandow. One count only as Sandow kicks out. 2.9 in near fall. Gene Tunney with some uppercuts. Look at the Miz unload on Cedric Alexander in the corner. Now Booker T. Joining in momentarily to work on Cedric before slamming the Miz to the outside. Foolish decision by Sandow trying to suplex Kali, although it was Gene Tunney with a strike from behind to break it up and bail him out of it. In the quarter, the Miz, the Batista, Batista with the back elbow. Kali looking over Tunney, the boxer there, Gene Tunney. Cedric Alexander in days. Before I could get there, it was Sandow. Over Batista's right wrist. Bear hug by Kali on Batista. Snap there by Double A Arn Anderson on Batista. A critical! A critical! The Miz got KO'd. The official ruling, of course. The bell rings. You hear a second. And Kali gets knocked out. Gene Tunney knocks out Kali. 
Again, that bell, the referee saying for sure yes, it is a knockout. Failed attempt at a superplex by Batista. And Sandow. Look at Tony unloading uppercuts. Sandow with an elbow. A leg lock on Batista. Arm ringer by Double A.R. and Anderson. Eugene Tunney. Sandell fires to the corner. Two. Takes some knee lifts on Sandell. Booker T picking up Arn Anderson. His left side. Reversal by Cedric Alexander. A backdrop that sends Booker T to the floor. Armour by Sandow. And Tommy the boxer. Big clothesline, Wayne Larian. By Batista DBT, a DDT by Arn Anderson. And Booker T in a cover. Two. Two count. It's a little slow going for that pen attempt, may have made a difference. Michinoku driver. Cedric was broken up almost immediately by Booker T. Cross-face submission maneuver wide by Batista on Sandow, but it was Tony, that boxer, looking for an opportunity and opening a window to go for a knockout punch on Batista. Batista's a bat. Sandow able to get close enough to Batista to neutralize the weapon. Enzugiri. Enzugiri by Cedric Alexander on Gene Tunney. Close line on Sandow by Booker T in the corner. It's Tunney. Drop down by Cedric. Three more moonsaults and a pin attempt. Two count. Tunney kicks out of two. Half crab by Booker T. Batista escapes rather quickly. Double A Arn Anderson works over the right arm of Dave Batista. Arm with a body slam as Batista falls to the floor. Double A will fall up. Again, working on that right arm. Inside the ring. Booker T. That scissor kick on Gene Tunney in a pin attempt that was broken up. Booker T. Damian Sandow, strike exchange in that right corner outside the ring is Batista. And Arn Anderson, arm with a backbreaker on Batista. Back elbow by Batista. And a headbutt by Batista drops a arm. Sandow throwing off the ropes. Batista will unceremoniously fire him to the outside. Not an ear fall. Batista trying to make the save. Cedric nearly had it. And Booker T, and there's Batista catching Alexander unawares. Spine buster. Not an ear fall. That's how quickly it in for any of the participants in this match. Cedric was like a million bucks. Like surprise, take it down. And nearly pinned. He got a 2.9. Batista drops the leg on Gene Tunney. Alexander fires Booker T to this left corner. That's kind of a uh, apparently unconscious Miz is just laying there. Brain buster on Double A Arn Anderson by Cedric Alexander. Back elbow by Sandow. And a pump handle drop. Booker T. Super kick. On Sandow by Booker T. Back elbow on Cedric Alexander by Booker T. Spine buster on Arn in the cover by Batista. Arn Anderson nearly got pinned with his own maneuver. Didn't take the Okai Yamari to make it happen either. However, Arn is able to escape and stays in the match. Booker T with a baseball bat. I'm distracted in that last description there, seeing Booker T moving with that weapon. Body slam. By Arn on Batista. Two count only. Another near fall. Arn Anderson keeps body slamming people have to fall outside the ring. 
the few cups now. Batista, critical. Damian Sandell's out. Being critical. One, two, three. 2.9 on your fall. Hard nearly had it. Gene Tunney escaped. Dropped hard with one punch. And there's the Michinoku driver. By Cedric, but. Very slow to get over there. Outside of the ring, it's Arn and Booker T. Inside, you got Cedric Alexander. You can double back elbows from Gene Tunney. And here's Batista. Same as he's from the blue. That's a 20 minute mark of the match. And you hear the crowd boys pick up. Arn Anderson and Booker T fight outside of the ring. A drop kick. Gene Tunney with a drop kick. Highly unconventional for a boxer. This is totally a conventional match. Suplex attempt by Cedric Dwatz. Not Batista sends Cedric Alexander to the outside. Tiny starting to show signs of exhaustion. An extended brawl on the floor by Booker T and Arn Anderson. Bow and arrow attempt applied to be applied there by Cedric. And before to be broken up by Gene Tunney. High rate by Arn. Booker T off the ropes. Arn Anderson collides with Cedric Alexander. Close line on Batista. My Booker too has a bat. I will go sign some autographs. Pin attempt on Arn by Cedric. Cedric Alexander. One for the pin attempt. Got a two count. Here we go again. Oh, the Mission Oki Brown. That's really not it. Double clothesline on Booker T. Batista gets fired in the corner. Gene Tunney steps in and gets thrown over the top rope. And again. There's a three count. Arm Anderson's been eliminated by Cedric Alexander. A big punch thrown. It drops Booker T. Gene Tunney with a punch that drops Cedric Alexander. We're down to four. Batista, Alexander, Booker T. And from the world of boxing, Gene Tunney. Batista gets a couple of hands up to block that punch attempt. I'm just trying to do a roll call there, and Gene's ready to take advantage. Booker T fires Cedric off the rope. Cedric Alexander collides with Gene Tunney on return. Cedric's fired up. Booker T with a baseball bat. This time it's Gene Tunney breaking it up. Flurry of punches by Tunney on Booker T. Now Batista will try to get that quick pin on Booker T. He got it. So Batista saw Tunney unloading on Booker T. Saw his opportunity for a quick pin and got it. So down to three. Dave Batista, Cedric Alexander, and Gene Tunney. Brainbuster. On Tunney by Cedric Alexander. Kick to the head of a thrown Tunney. Now the strike exchange. Gene Tunney and Cedric Alexander. And a drop kick from Gene Tunney gets the better of Cedric Alexander. Big clothesline. Batista biding his time. And now Cedric Alexander takes advantage. And as long as you're a boxer in a match like this, you're at risk of being knocked at any particular point. Cedric with a springboard. Strike that connects on Gene Tunney. Cedric comes a baseball bat. Batista grabs a baseball bat, but Cedric swings and connects. Get that out of his hands if I can help it. Look for that Larry. Gene Tunney had to get in the way. Now Gene Tunney unloading on Dave Batista, punches to the head. Double knee lifts. Batista has been lacerated. Big lariat on Tunney by Batista, broke it almost immediately by Cedric Alexander. Cedric goes to get it back. And you're the thud, the sickening thud of a baseball bat. 
And Cedric again with that weapon on Tunney. And no disqualifications, though. So Cedric within his rights. Look at the carnage in the ring. The Miz. Great Kali. Damian Sandow all out. And a huge running lariat. By Batista and Cedric Alexander. Cedric has been eliminated. We're down to two. Dave Batista and Gene Tunney. This could be a challenge. Gene Tunney starting to hulk up like his character in Mike Tyson's punch out. The big Lariat by Batista on Tunney to win the match. Two count. Punch to the back of the head of Batista. That's why I was concerned. And now Batista able to back out for 30 minutes into this match. Exhaustion setting in for both men. Kind of weak looking kick to the back. So it's a like, supposedly strong strike there for Batista, but it was effective. You can see how quickly Tunney's moving, trying to stay in that striking range. Not so close that I can grab him, but close enough where he can hit. Luckily, Batista has long legs. Batista gets a back elbow, and Tunney up him wide open for a punch to the face. Back away from that, gets a clothesline. This a attempted dive or tackle there. Batista gets dropped by Gene Tunney. Back elbow, but this is uh, a good time to grab a baseball bat, don't you think? Batista and the thud. So this guy with a baseball bat, he sure showed up, popped up relatively easily. So quick reflexes there by Gene Tunney. Scooting back after having seen what the uh, the range Batista has on his kick. Now that can affect his offense. And there's Tunney's buying his time. And Batista running there foolishly. Now Batista weakened. And this is where you really run into trouble against the boxer in this game. Picked up and knocked down over and over. A post to the fans here for that. Unfortunately for Batista, while he does that, Gene Tunney is has the opportunity to rest up and catch his breath for just a moment in the ring. That time Tunney walked in, and Batista was ready with a kick. Trying to stomp down Gene Tunney, and now a striking shoot. <laughs> I love the striking shoot with the boxer with the big gloves, you know, the blue teeth of the... Over his Batista, the big clothesline on Gene Tunney in a cover. Batista wins. Batista being a poor sport. Headbutts. It's good. Uh, three knockouts. First three eliminations, The Miz and Kali were in less than 30 seconds of one another. Sandell, Arn, Booker T, Cedric Alexander, Gene Tunney all out. Your winner, Dave Batista. Alright. In honor of the forthcoming release of Total Extreme Wrestling 2020. Go to the, that theme for the Takafumi City Gym. We'll go with younger Tiger Hattori for that.
here early. Let me to pick uh, Omega. Try not to repeat guys that have played at least recently. I've been a while for Sonata, but that version of it's not the one I want. No thanks. I'm going to pass on uh, playing as Yujiro. Thank you. David Finlay. Now, here we go. The Tokyo Dojo. It was fun seeing Finlay and uh, Juice Robinson. They were the tag champs when New Japan ran the show in Nashville. They lost the titles just uh, a couple of shows later. right back take a quick break all right so if there are any suggestions you any of y'all have as far as wrestlers you'd like to see involved just let me know and if possible and feasible I'll do so Okay, I'm back. We're playing as David Finlay.
Go with Dragon Lee. I don't understand why Dragon Lee became Ryu Lee with New Japan Pro Wrestling. I know that he used to work for CMLL and no longer does, but New Japan is a business partner with CMLL. What's the point of having a business partner if you're going to bring in somebody that they own the name, they're not going to let you use it, or they're disinclined to or whatever. And I'm sure they got their reasons. I'm not... I just don't know what they are. That might be able to weird fit in the white year. We'll go with Kojima, why not? Kojima was another wrestler I saw in the uh, New Japan of America show took place about three months, a little more than three months ago here in the uh, Nashville area. Actually, not the area, downtown Nashville is where it was, the uh, War Memorial Auditorium. Really cool venue for live pro wrestling. It's where NXT's run when they run Nashville before. It's where uh, Ring of Honor really should tape television as opposed to cavernous Nashville Municipal Auditorium. And don't get me wrong, I've got much love for Muni. Great memories, crazy memories in some cases. But mostly just good memories from there. The three Starcades. The young Lions that have been training with Shibata in the Los Angeles dojo in Long Beach. They just keep getting better and better. Obviously, since the pandemic, they haven't really been able to wrestle any matches to be seen, but. I can only imagine they'll be even better and stronger and more effective when everything's finally start to get back to normal. I presume they're there. I don't know for a fact, but I think that would be as long as you can really stay isolated within your group and not be tempted to venture out. Be effective. Run Kushida. Run, run. Like it's a town. I haven't run that Kushida yet. No, no, no. Haven't used him in one of these matches yet. Go with Lady or a Fat Masala. It's too bad that it never worked out for all Japan to bring over Misawa, and Kawada, and Kobashi, and Tawe, and Akiyama at some point in the 90s. I know there would, at one point or another, had been discussions, and I'm sure ECW would have loved to have made it happen. And that's really not the uh, all Japan style, though. It hasn't been. Even true to this day, you think about with Kento Miyahara. Sandman, why not? Go sitting in the black outfit. I 
I think I've used Sekimoto in a match when the uh, Blue Place Fire Pro stream, but I'm not sure. Okay. Episode 3. And that's it. Okay. And while I do have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of wrestlers, need more if I wanted to download more. At some point, you have to mix it up a little bit and have... The nice thing is, it's almost limitless like combinations of guys. I don't want to burn out any one or two particular, but kind of hard to do that with all the great choices. my head well well I'm definitely aware that Akira Maeda is a uh, much taller than Daisuke Sekimoto just two guys with similar outfits where it's just even at a glance in an eight-person match it can be tough at a an instant to figure out at the side ascertain who a particular person might be. Joe Frazier. All right. And this is same as usual. If you've seen any of the last few feeds, it's been like this. When I initially started the Loop Place Fire Pro series, episode one, and a couple episodes after that, I had it at computer level eight, which is typically where I play. And it's just a regular like one-on-one -on -one or tag team match. But I found I was winning too much playing at level 8 with this. So I bumped it to level 9. And while I still can win, it doesn't happen every time. That's If, if I win every time, that's just not going to be fun after a while. Alright, so here we go. Be me playing as David Finlay, taking on Dragon Lee, Satoshi Kojima, Kushida. Mitsuharu Masawa, The Sandman, Daisuke Sekimoto, and Smokin' Joe Frazier. Your referee is Tiger Hattori, The Venue, Takafubi City Gym, and the ring design, Total Extreme Wrestling. There we go. Time to load, okay. Right. Check out the giant Penn Station sandwich. I've enjoyed having some options, outlets for creativity with some of these designs. How can I do something that would be like a, a very visual but a positive visual thing? It'd be kind of cool and different. So what the uh, Penn Station website, that's one of their actual sandwiches, like a what they professionally shot. It's difficult to photograph food and have it look the way you want it to look. There's an art to it. And 3D! 3D pulled off by Finlay and Kojima. Kushida thrown to the corner. And Finlay. Kyle 
Driver on Kojima. Nice sand man. Sekimoto beats back a double team. Masawa, elbow strikes for Smokey Joe Frazier. <laughs> One collision after another in there. It's me playing as uh, David Finlay. With the red tights with the black polka knots. Oh, whatever that's supposed to be. It's hoping to catch Masawa off the rope to a clever move. I don't think I've ever played as this uh, David Finlay edit. Long exchange between Finlay and the Sandman. And that's where the mods are so nice because finally Finlay gets the better Sandman. I mean the alternating link or variable link I think it is, but for those uh, strike exchanges, it's not the same every time. It reflects how much energy or lack thereof of energy wrestlers might have, so it'll go longer early in the match, and typically later it'll go shorter. So that variance was kind of predictable, if that makes any sense. Body slam by Finlay since Dragon Lee to the outside. Sekimoto, pile driver on Kushida. Sandman goes to work on Masawa. Suplex. Vertical suplex. Kushida by Dragon Lee for past the five minute mark of the match. Sandman to the outside. Grabs a sledgehammer. We'll go the other way with it. Maybe we'll hang out with Kojima for a minute. Here's a thud. Dragon Lee gets dropped with that sledgehammer swing by the Sandman. Put over here for safety. Critical! Daisuke Sekimoto got critical. Knocked out. We're moving six minutes into the match. Flash knockouts can get anyone. A frog splash by Masawa off the top rope of the Kojima. Masawa gets fired into Sandman. Spoken Joe Frazier goes to work first Kushida. He actually gets taken down after this. German suplex. That side headlock, that face lock by Masawa. He has submission out of Kojima, spinning elbow. Drops Kojima, Masawa, and Kojima. Moonsault, Kojima with a moonsault. Or Kushida, excuse me. Kushida with a moonsault and a two count on Dragon Lee. We're looking over at Kojima saying, when's it my turn to get a ref count? It's getting stalked by Sandman. It almost got me there with a sledgehammer. I'm gonna pose to the fans for a minute. Wave to him like a politician. Baseball bat. Hey, Masawa. No soldier. Stiff. Rashida comes to the rescue. A Finlay. He's gonna take all. Oh, he's gonna be attacked by Masawa. He's gonna try to flick him. Sandman pick up the sledgehammer. Ankle lock by Dragon Lee. And Sandman. Masawa went for a Tiger Driver. Burst into a backslide by Finlay. That was shot by Sandman, who took down Finlay, then a low blow by Sandman to Masawa. Kojima on rubbery legs. That's the 10 minute mark of the match. Smoking Joe Frazier. And the Sandman. Critical! Sandman just got critical by Smoking Joe. Kojima! Satoshi Kojima gets critical by Smoking Joe Frazier. But down to five, Asawa, the elbow for Frazier. Running hip attack of some sort of running kick missed by Kushida. But Kushida with a sliced bread on Dragon Lee. And that's me playing as David Finlay just put a chin lock rest hold on Asawa. Nice reversal on Dragon Lee. Kind of harm Masawa. Masawa. Slight headlock 
It looks simple, but it's been very effective in his career. Frazier to the corner. Body saved by Finlay. And Smoking Joe falls to the outside. Funny punch. Kind of lucky with that. Knocked down the Sawa and after connected. The Sawa getting back a double team from Finlay. And Frazier. Quick exchange. Finlay. And Dragon Lee. Emerald Flosion. Sawa just drops the shoot of the Emerald Flosion. Just broke out after a one count by Frazier. Finlay gets the better. In exchange, now Dragon Lee finds himself getting punched multiple times. I don't know that spot was going to be. I was going to go for a tope. Sorry, Brown, I'll do it. Nah. We're having botchamania moments with Finlay. Masala spinning around and taken down. Finlay, running punch, connects on Masala. Dragon Lee and Kushida. Kushida, running arm breaker. Taking down Dragon Lee. Side headlock. An elbow drop, Smoking Joe. Finlay put the boots to Frazier and get away as quick as possible. German release suplex, but it sets Kushida flipping through. Kushida escaping. Kushida, springboard moonsault out of the corner. Going for David Finlay. Now it's Masala going for the pin on Finlay. Going to be saved by Kushida. Down the stretch. The power bomb. Pinning combination there by Dragon Lee. Only a one count. A long time to get there. Two point nine near fall. Finlay looked on. Say, on your accord, can you kick out Masawa? The strike exchange now is Kushida. Spinning elbow. Masawa drops Kushida. Finlay goes for an arm bar there. Who has it broken up? And now Frazier punches to the head. The left side of the face. A Dragon Lee. German suplex for the bridge by Finlay. Tiger Tori going for that other potential near fall. Still getting there, but it didn't matter because it was Smoke and Joe to break it up. Kushida with a reversal. Amasawa. And now an arm bar applied. And it broke up very quickly by Dragon Lee. Three punches to the stomach. On Finlay. By Frazier. Frazier drops David Finlay. This is that trouble you can run into based off of the boxer. And you're gassed, but instead it's a roll through. Two count. Kushida gets a two count on Dragon Lee. It took a long time for referee Tiger Tori to get over there. Arm drag by Finlay on the sour. Kushida back into the ring. Smoke and Joe unloads on Dragon Lee. Release German suplex by Masawa. And Dragon Lee, ankle lock applied. Ankle lock on Smoke and Joe by Kushida. Finlay rolls Dragon Lee out of the floor. In that right corner, a hard punch to the face drops Kushida. Smoking Joe. Going hard here. And we're 20 minutes into this match. We have power and the speed. Frazier's not slowed down. Pin attempt by Kushida. Amasawa's broken up at two by Finlay. Body slam. By Kushida since Dragon Lee to the floor. Finley with a baseball bat. Takes out both Masala and Kushida. Now smoking Joe Frazier. Ankle walk the ball on Finlay. By Dragon Lee. Arm bar by Kushida and Mitsuhara Masawa. Release German suplex by Dragon Lee and Smoking Joe Frazier. Now Spinlay getting the cover. 2.9 in near, near fall. Smoking the cow away. 
Masala spinning elbow. Doesn't connect. I think Masala could help kept up there with Kushidi, but it had the elimination. There's a critical. Dragon Lee just got critical. Tiger Driver. By Masala. Right, broken abdominal stretch by Finlay on Smoking Joe Frazier. Down to four. David Finlay, Kushida, Smoking Joe Frazier, and Mitsuhara Masala. Nice reversal by Masala. Double back kick there to knock down Finlay. <laughs> Sorry, Kushida. <laughs> I need mean to laugh at you, buddy, but I was not expecting to be that effective. I'm so sorry I just grabbed the baseball bat again. But... There we go, the four. The end is in sight. Drop kick off the mark. A little embarrassing there for Finlay. It's a dazed opponent. Nothing but air. Yoshida versus Finlay into a running bulldog. Smoking Joe drops into Finlay with a couple of punches. Collision. I'm a solid Kushida. Finlay rolls Kushida to the outside. Uppercut. Nice smoking Joe Frazier to the back of the head of Mitsuhara Harvasawa. And again, a shot to the head. Wait, 25 minutes into this match. Roll through by Masawa. Kushida. Kushida's been eliminated. Finlay. A few punches there in succession from smoking Joe Frazier. He's not feeling the best. Running elbow. Connects. Right, Mitsuhara Harvasawa. We're down to three. Masawa. Smoking Joe Frazier. David Finlay will be playing against David Finlay. That punch was just enough to daze Smoking Joe, but he got out of it. Now a roll up by Masawa. And Mitsuhara Masawa with that roll up has eliminated Smoking Joe for Asia. We're down to two. Masawa and Finlay. Masawa with that Tiger Driver instead of a double underhook suplex. Taking down Finlay. Off the ropes, Masawa. Running elbow strike. Reversal. A lot of back and forth, back elbow. Masawa so slow with that elbow setup, that spinning elbow. Had to go the other way. Now collision after the Irish hooks and Masawa that top corner. We're down to two, but the action is not letting up. I'm not saying it like, like you're shilling the product kind of way. It's still tough to call, just the two of them. When he closed by Masawa and Finlay. Finlay trying to beat Masawa in his own game with an elbow, unsuccessful. Now a strike exchange. Elbows for Masawa. European uppercuts by Finlay. Spinning elbow. And a drop kick. A drop kick by David Finlay. It takes down Mitchell Harvest Sawa, the final two in this match. Abdominal stretch applied. Masawa gets out of it. Back elbow, but poor timing, and both things collide full of the mat. Masawa. And we'll close. Oh, a baseball bat! My goodness! Finlay. And we'll close like hit first of the bat, and that'll do it. Quite the finish. Masawa not messing around. Lined it up perfectly. Drop that Flosion's tough enough as is. As letting on a baseball bat head first goes. And you got yourself a victory for Mitsuhara Masala. The four first falls were all knockouts. In the end, Mitsuhara Masala is your winner. All right, so make a note here. Not that you can see this on the screen, but I'm just thinking out loud while I'm doing it. Try to make a notation of the rings that I used on a given episode. I had to switch them out for the next time. I'm not trying to, did I use this then or did I not? And it's all that extra work that's really unnecessary. Just put a little bit of planning into it or forethought, if nothing else.
Oh, I had it set to hit return, but I took a quick break earlier. I was playing as David Finlay. I had the uh, box ready to hit enter, and I didn't. So there it is now after the fact. I think you kind of figured it out after watching the match, if you saw it. But for those of you just joining us, welcome to a new audience. Next up, we'll go Tokyo Dome with the Whataburger themed ring. Whataburger is a, uh, I should might imagine, a hamburger restaurant a chain in the United States. There's a little kid, like in the 80s, they had, a, I think, a couple of Whataburgers around here in Nashville. And then, as the restaurants sometimes have happened, they uh, closed down most of them. All the ones around here were long gone. I remember that's like like high angle roof, like angles up the way to it was memorable, and uh, but you know, restaurants come and go. I spent five years in Tampa, Florida. Had absolute time of my life there. Absolutely loved it. But uh, working in radio, it's, it's tremendous fun at times. It's a lot of work, but the pay's not all that good. And so eventually, reached a point where it's like, oh, <laughs> I got to make some money. So had to do that. Moved to the Birmingham, Alabama area, and lived in a suburb called Alabaster. They're actually really cool. Like, you know, Alabama doesn't necessarily have the cool factor that other places might, but Alabaster, Alabama sounds like a really cool, like, hailing from Alabaster, Alabama. That sort of thing. So, uh, anyway, I mentioned Alabaster because while I was there that one year in the territory, uh, real close to my apartment complex, they opened a Whataburger. Anyway, that's a... That's nice a little break time story there about the Whataburger in Alabaster, Alabama from 14 years ago, whatever it was. All right, let's get uh, the going here. Yeah. This will be the last one of the night. This is episode nine. This one, well, like the smiley face looking logo there, that's the uh, Joe Higuchi outfit in the uh, light blue. Although, look, Marty Asami. But don't cry for Sunny Fargo. You will always have a place in my sim matches or my blue place fire pro live stream episodes and it's an excuse to have a referee wearing all yellow with some white you know the, and being authentic and from something like star k85 so it's not like it's a super obscure thing but like, okay yes it is a super obscure thing but not like from a house show or something or a, a live international event that's barely canon if you want to consider anything in pro wrestling canon as far as Referee outfits go, or anything else for that matter, let's be honest. Zack Ryder. He tried. An early example of how you get punished in WWE if you get yourself over more than they want you to. All well, this online YouTube and other stuff, the videos, and built himself as a brand and got over more than they wanted. And, well, you know the rest. But if you don't, I'll tell you, it didn't really end all that well. I was at WrestleMania 32 when they had him win the Intercontinental title in the ladder match, but he lost like two nights later. It's one of those. And he got a WrestleMania win, so if that's something that matters to him as far as his career goes, he won a title there. You know, if you want to think Ricky Steamboat WrestleMania 3, Razor Ramon with a Intercontinental title versus Disputed Intercontinental title. And maybe in real life, modern day WWE, they'll do something like that with Sami Zayn whenever it's, uh, we're not facing a pandemic. Although I had to, I have to admit, I didn't even know that Zayn was the Intercontinental champion until they had him lose the belt. But 
mean, that's just a reflection of how little I watch WWE product. I'll hear about it. I'll hear like a observer or whatever audio review and because there's no emotional attachment, there's no long-term memory that really sticks out for me. Hey, Coco Sports, how's it going? Cool. I don't know what might be wrong as far as the uh, being able to host or raid or whatever for the Twitch. It's been going pretty well. Nothing like amazing must see from the shows thus far, but some fun stuff. Yeah, and that's, if I can figure out something that needs to be changed from a configuration standpoint, I'll, I'll do it. But, yeah, yeah, tremendous game, a lot of fun. How's your night going? Or morning or whatever, it all runs together for me after a while. Tyson Kidd, T.J. Wilson. I'll be playing as him against a big cast. Mark Miro. This is why I like the random select. I might have just, if I were just flipping through, I might not stuff on Mark Miro. Mark Miro is the first person I ever saw in person hit a shooting star press at a WWF house show in Evansville, Indiana. I don't like this version of Styles compared to another one I've got. I'm gonna double check because it let me think of uh see if I've used them yet one of these. I have not. Oh come on, that's what I was going for. I prefer that version. You no know, offense to the creator that made this one, I just I go with that, or I go with one that looks a little more like it. I like the uh, white with the black knee pads and the red trim. That's pretty good. Like it's a, it's called a kit, like it's a soccer uniform or something. But because the Whataburger ring that I've got set up for this match is a white mat, I'm trying not to have too many guys with white outfits. Like Mark Merrill's white boots, those will be okay, but I'm not going to put like. Minoru Suzuki in there in his white tights. I mean, I guess I could, but let's see why. Oh, Dan Sever. And uh, in his first book, Bobby Blaze, who wrestled in WCW, but also before that, Smoky Mountain Wrestling and elsewhere, when he was the Smoky Mountain champion, uh, Bobby had to wrestle. Oh, maybe, maybe he wasn't champion at the time, but he had to wrestle. No, I take it back. He probably wasn't because it was Dan Severn was the NWA world champion. And it was like a spot show or whatever that worked out where they had him as a one-off. So Bobby Blaze wrestled Dan Severn. I think the match is on YouTube. But Severn, he was an MMA guy, mixed martial arts, a fighter. Relatively green when it came to actual pro wrestling. And he made it for him by being very, very stiff. But, uh, whoop. Moxley in episode two. And I think that's it. Anyway, it doesn't matter that much. If I had somebody the same show five times in a row, it really wouldn't make that much of a difference. I just, I know there's more entertainment to be found at times, but it's a little bit of variety.
And that's the original La Parker, not the one that passed away, but the one that's now known as L.A. Park. This one with the yellow. There we go. That's the one. And look, I prefer the classic, you know, La Par original La Parka with a white mask and all, and uh, dancing with a chair or whatever, but for the purposes of this match, this will help. Oh, it doesn't make that much of a difference. It's, it's La Parka, L.A. Park. It'll stand out. It's kind of good at that. One more. This game's a lot of fun. I'm in a tough situation. I bought Super Mega Baseball 3 via Steam to play for my computer. I love that series. I, baseball is something I just follow very casually anymore. You know, real life or video games or whatever. But this series is something special and a lot of fun to play. And it just would not cooperate for me with my computer. I tried streaming with it. It was just a disaster. But that to my computer just doesn't have the proper kind of video card. I've got 16 gigs of RAM. But I tried streaming it and I was very naive about how easy it would be because it was not at all easy. It was, just, it was very frustrating. Because the series itself is amazing. The original Super Mega Baseball, a lot of fun, made even better with two. And what they've got with three looks great. It's just, if it won't play correctly, that doesn't really help. But I find the bite on the PlayStation 4, which is, I know it worked there before, and it should again. I don't want to have good things to say about the thing. I want to, like, you know, be negative about it. No people that have gotten it to work have said it's a lot of fun. But, luckily, it's perhaps less uh, graphics intensive with Fire Pro, but that's a good thing. I'm not trying to dissuade anybody from buying the game. I'm just let it be known that I had some problems with it. And it's probably my system, something I've set up or whatever, but. Now here's Jericho grayed out again. How about every bit of DLC? <laughs> I. We went through there to like uninstall and reinstall through like the top hat thing. Well, how about if you're going to update that part, you make it so it'll download it automatically. For as terrible as this user interface can be sometimes, you can't throw us a bone with that. We gotta go through manually every time some creator puts a new shirt on somebody. Gotta get a half dozen things. Come on. I, mean, I love this game. I put up with a lot of nonsense with this because it's such a minor thing compared to the fun this is, but come on. Anyway. I wasn't going to use Jericho anyway. I used him not too long ago, so. Nevertheless, I don't like seeing that. Mr. Hughes. Did he ever have a good match? I'm not being facetious. Like a reason, not like a you know two-minute squash either. We just you know beat up some jobber, but man, this is I mean, <laughs> the times I saw him in WCW, unimpressive. Might even say terrible at times, depending on the opponent. WWF, not exactly a high point in the 1993 King of the Ring. I mean, I've never met the guy. He could be a real nice guy in real life, and, you know, that's nothing personal, wasn't it? But he was big, and he's, you know, that kind of size, you'll get opportunities, even if you're... Although today, I don't think it would be nearly as much the case, because if you're, even, if you're not a decent worker in there today, even in the paint-by-numbers world of WWE micromanaged matches, you're still going to run into some challenges. 
But I, as far as going back to the Super Mega Baseball 3, I plan to get it for the PS4. I was waiting a day or two to cool off for a second. I got, I actually got really angry playing it because it wasn't working right. I guess it's probably a blessing that the uh, the stream didn't work very well at all, even when I recorded it locally. It just, just in a surly mood, I guess, to go with it. <laughs> it wouldn't work, but come on, you gotta be kidding me. Because the game itself is so much fun, at least the first two series, and I know from the videos that I've seen online and reviews as well from people, the video it will play properly when set up properly. So it's. I imagine it's a problem on this end, and ultimately, they refunded my money on it. It's been like, it's a two-hour limit, I guess, as far as a refund on a Steam game. I've never, I buy a game, it's the game I bought, you know, good, bad, or indifferent, I'll go with it, usually. But this was different, because I couldn't get it to work, and then it was just me just trying everything I could to get it to, and then, but, oh wait, it says three hours, but more than two, and won't let you. But, it's like, we'll automatically let you, to, you know. So I sent a note and explained it, and they were real good about it, and right away. So, no harm, no foul, and, uh, I'll just use the money and get the, you know. So it's a sale lost on the PC side, the Steam side, but it wouldn't be picked up on the PS4 side. But, you know, that, that, those publishers, though, they, I could mention this before, but they really did. They earned a lot of goodwill just by giving me that free upgrade with Super Mega Baseball 1 from the PS3 to the PS4. I don't forget things like that. I'm a fan of Ortiz. Santana as well. I mean, both of them, that team. I mean, Santana's like to be more, they're both to be serious, but Santana can get there and give you a really good promo about something that seems very legitimate because it probably is very legitimate for him. They come across as very sincere. Although Ortiz can be kind of goofy at times, but it's in, in an endearing kind of way, at least from what I've seen. Even though he's on like the bad guy side with uh, the inner circle, it's ultimately with Jericho and so. Jericho is going to want to play heel. That's what he's wanting to do here. And he's very effective at it while still being very well liked. So this should be interesting. Again, this is the uh, last match of the night here on this live stream, episode 9 of Lou Pickney Plays Fire Pro Wrestling World. I keep going back and forth as far as the name goes, the title. Because Lou Pickney plays Fire Pro Wrestling World is a long title. But that's, you know. I, but Lou plays Fire Pro Wrestling World. Okay, a little shorter. I don't have to put my last name in there. It's, it's in the comments section. You can figure it out. There's. So it's not even like an ego thing. Just trying to have a... Because there's more than one person out there named Lou. There's more than one person out there in Nashville, the Nashville area named Lou. It's like I've got that name across the board by any means. But it was available for Twitch. And I had uh, Fire Pro World Fan as my handle on Twitch before, but I found that, I thought, okay, that's going to be very much pigeonholing me. But it's hopefully easy enough to figure out the way I've got it set. All right, here we go. I'll be playing as Tyson Kidd, taking on Big Cass, Mark Miro, AJ Styles, Dan Severn, John Moxley, LA Park, and Ortiz. Your referee is Marty Asami, the venue, Tokyo Dome, and the ring theme, Whataburger. There we go. Takes it's time to load. Hi. I created this uh, ring theme the night that I, I think it was Austin, Texas. We were in Texas that uh, AEW had a show and it was a really good heat line though, like insulting people in that like Whataburger went to great the Whataburger. Main area operations there. Oh, you've been to match the uh, Tokyo Dome? I've seen on TV plenty of matches in there, but I've never been to Japan. I'd love to go, but it's 
tough. My sister speaks some Japanese. Like in high school, she took Japanese. Like as a side thing. Really smart like that. She's got a full ride scholarship. To Birmingham Southern, which is not cheap at all. Would you like to think I was you know, smart and able to get a scholarship? She, she was exceptionally hard. Tyson Kidd in the blue. Moxley, you probably know, with a beard there. Got big cast. Black tights with the teal blue triangle. Looks like I got a maritime flag or something on the back of his tights. Ortiz. Going after Moxley. We lost Dan Severn. for Kimura on AJ Styles. Mark Merrow taking down my Tyson Kidd. A.K.A. T.J. Wilson, not strike exchange between Kenneth and Miro. So, Kukua Sports, what's your favorite match that you've seen in uh, Tokyo Down? <laughs> Nakamura and A.J. That was a tremendous match. Castle from the outside. It, it was so disappointing at WrestleMania 34, knowing that how great of a match they had had in New Japan. I think maybe they'll finally, you know, let Nakamura be old Nakamura for one time. It's a big show, but nope. Never got a second gear. It was not the uh, four and three quarter classic they had in Tokyo. Side slam on the floor. Yeah, I can't watch WWE anymore either. It's, I mean, that's not. And I don't blame the people, the wrestlers themselves, for the most part, because they're going to do all these micromanaged things to having almost no control of their own career as a purported independent contract. I tell you, they've really been hurt though by the whole no crowds thing. As much as it was a negative for AEW. It was negative for everybody. It was a horrible thing we're all having to deal with. But at least with WWE, when they have a live crowd with stupid Vince McMahon, unfunny comedy, that... I, I, I can only imagine how much money that company has never brought in and would have otherwise had just run people off of their awful sense of comedy there. It was a roll-up. Two count early there on Tyson Kidd by, of all people, Big Cass. It makes me sad for all the wrestlers in the WWE system who I like, who I've seen wrestle before, and it was great. This is a great Matt Riddle match. He's you know, on the NXT side, it's just empty buildings. And not just that they're empty buildings, but there's like, unlike what AEW does for you, there's some wrestlers at ringside to give you some noise. That makes a huge difference. Tyson yeah. Kidd trying to get the submission of Ortiz. But Ortiz escapes. Oh, a slow down there for a second. And Miro can blast him in. We are running crisscross. And throwing Ortiz one way with the other. Played with Styles. Now Styles is standing shooting sharp press. Of the crowd. It's tough. I went off at a great link the other night on uh, episode number eight about what happens with NXT. You can't get mostly involved with NXT wrestlers because you know it's not going to end well. Nick, even if you run there is great, you know, but the long term, it's, it doesn't end well. And but now that there's more involvement by Vince McMahon with the whole Wednesday nights on USA thing, it has not been beneficial to the project. I don't want to be too 
negative on NXT either. Because, I mean, especially compared to the rest of it, I mean, even when it's, even with the so, certain rules they have to have, my like NXT live event shows have always been yeah. great fun. I never had a bad time at one. On the outside, Tyson Kidd's trying to get Ortiz out there. Ortiz wasn't going to play for it. And now into the ring. I just made a major save for Ortiz. It looked like Mark Mayer was going to set up Ortiz for a tombstone pile driver. But ultimately, the problem is this. The main roster is where beloved NXT acts go to die. It's going to ruin there. Body slam. And Tyson Kidd. All right, big cast. A big cast with a body back suplex on LA Park. Ortiz and Kidd keep it for a double team takeover. And styled in two count. Those wrestlers are there jumbled up. Well, hang on over here for a second. Although I have to say, I don't know some of those guys that have been there for a while in NXT and still have been called up. I think the reason they've been called up in part is because they haven't signed a new contract. I could be wrong about that, but as far as what's known publicly, I haven't been able to find any information on it. I mean, if you're Adam Cole or Kyle O'Reilly or Bobby Fish, I know there may be more money potentially on the main roster, but more money, more problems. In the worst of ways in a lot of cases in WWE, especially modern day WWE. It's unfortunate. That was a quick cover there. 2.9 a near fall. I just got eliminated. Big cast taking it. The Tyson kid. Be a blessing in disguise with Kid Fuddy outside. The inventory here what's under the ring. Barbed wire baseball bat. Oh, hey, Mark. Hey, Ortiz. Sorry, pal. Styles the Destino on LA Park. And the phenomenal forearm, but way off. One of the negatives in this game off the top of the Centon by LA Park. Tyson Kidd throwing big cash to the outside. Now a leg break fine. Submission move on Ortiz. By Tyson Kidd, but Ortiz gets out of it. Pen attempt by Cass. Two count. Probably been a very unsatisfactory way to go out. If we can eliminate, at least it'd be like a finisher or something. Not just a random jump on top pen attempt because Morty Asami counts fast. There's a credit uh, chair spot. The, uh, oh, he hit me with a chair, but you didn't see it, so. Four fifty off the top by Styles. Moose off the top. And another four fifty all in succession on John Moxley. That's called targeting the opponent right there. And a frog splash. Look at the distance reach there by Styles. Way too low to, or way too long to get there on the cover. So Mark Miro eliminated. Like great by Ortiz. The Tyson Kid punches for seven. The last of which drops him. For Moxley. Now Moxley, LA Park. LA Park vertical suplex. Cass gets fired into seven. Cass hits the ropes and runs right into, and this could be trouble. Right, Tyson Kidd, pin attempt. This could do it for him. Yeah. Well, yeah I don't mind going out early sometimes. It's, if I'm going to win all the time, it's not any fun. So Tyson Kidd eliminated. Here's the chairman. Ray Park swinging away. Styles, I think Styles is going to set up Ortiz for that springboard phenomenal air elbow, but up there changes his mind. Now, they come over with a double wrist like applied on big cast. Three count. Ray Park just pinned John Moxley. 
strike exchange between L.A. Park and Ortiz. Big cast and a release. Suplex there. A German suplex by Dan Severn. Listen, Big Cass flying. Look at that tired chair spot. That's the way to do it, like Parker. If you're gonna swing a chair, he's one of the real ones. Well, a submission maneuver locked in by Dan Severn on Ellie Park. Ellie Park escapes. Another submission. And Ortiz eliminated. I failed to put my uh, wrestler name in chat as was going on in the limit, but played as Tyson Kidd. And there's another one. Dan Sever giving lessons here. Sever is trying the uh, submission by way of a series of headbutts. 450 off the top. Connects into the back of Dan Sever. L.A. Park wobbling the leg with me out of it. Sever missed on a takedown with their styles. Look over the legs of L.A. Park. Strike exchange. Styles and Severn. And the discus Lariat gets the better of Severn. Chair shot. And another chair shot apiece from L.A. Park for Dan Severn. And A.J. Styles with a chair to the gut. Now submission maneuver locked in. Severn. Styles has a half hard to attempt to uh, make the save. And oh, just gives up on it. Vertical suplex, LA Park. Couple of shots to the head on Severn. And a series of punches. And a well timed Lindsey Gary by AJ Styles on LA Park. Waiting for LA Park to unfinish holding his offense on Severn. And then striking. Now Severn. Severn. And must get the submission there. It's a frog splash off the top onto LA Park. One count, and for whatever reason, it's broken up by Severn. Severn now gets a submission. Does he want to take that ball to the Kimura, that double wrist lock by Dan Severn? That suplex that's in Styles. Almost breaking the rules of physics. Flying to the outside. And that for Dan Severn a chance to rest up. And now Severn trying to get a submission for the win. AJ Styles hanging in there. It's the last match of the night. It's episode nine of Lou Pickney Plays Fire Pro Wrestling World. Styles says that's it. Styles Clash. And he hits. AJ Styles with a Styles Clash in the cover. Referee Marty Asami. AJ Styles gets the pin on Dan Severn. It was a good match. Way to close it out, even though I got knocked out earlier than normal. That was okay. But the computer find it out. And at the end, it's what most people would call the Styles Clash or the Appeal Body Buster, which sounds lewd. So Mark Miro, Tyson Kidd, John Moxley, Ortiz, Big Cass, Ellie Park, and Dan Sever. And at the end, your winner, AJ Styles. All right, well, that was fun. And that's going to wrap it up for Episode 9 of Blue Plays Fire Pro World. I imagine there'll be an episode 10 coming relatively soon, maybe tomorrow night, late night, Friday night, the Saturday morning, Nashville time, Central Daylight time. You can figure out what time it is in Chicago. You can figure out what time it is here. So as always, thanks for watching and checking this out. If you got any ideas, suggestions, whatever, feel free to send them my way. Fire Pro World Fan. That's Fire, F-I-R-E, Pro, P-R-O. World, W O R L D, fan, F A N. Ask me on Twitter or just Lou Pickney, L O U P I C K N E Y. Whether it's dot com or it's on Twitter, that's me. So, enough plugs here at the end. And that's going to do it for this episode of Lou Pickney Plays Fire Pro Wrestling World, episode number nine. Next time around, we'll hit double digits. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time for episode number 10.